The following program may contain strong language and mature content. Viewer discretion is advised. Because you could be watching this at any time of the day. It is your fave out here. Do all Ryan D from Healthy Him and Dwayne Savi from the Networks program. What's going on, y'all? It's a nice what's today? Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> and welcome back to the Healthy Him show. You know, we do this every Tuesday, uh, 4 30 to 5 30 live. Uh, first off, we gotta always, you know, thank Power Media for producing us so beautifully. APLA Health for giving us the jobs we have today and CDC for bringing the Munty Hunty. Okay, they are the reason we have the show and the reason I have my program. Okay, so thank you CDC for funding Healthy Him and the Healthy Him show. Okay, okay. and other things CDC, thank you so much. That part, okay, hello. <laughs> CDC do got money though, low key. They do, nah, it's not low key. It's very high key. They be. You're right, they do, they do. But without you know further ado, how you feel today, Carlos? Yeah, I feel good today was, um, it started off interesting. Um, mm. but I feel accomplished, productive, got a lot done. That's good. Had a nice little like break in between. Okay. So I'm feeling good, you okay. know. I'm learning how to like emotionally regulate more and more, and I love that for mm-hmm. me. I love that. Mm-hmm. Period. Boop, 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 boop. Um, well, I'm feeling good. Thanks for asking. Oh yes. Um, how are how are you? It's co-host? okay, it's okay. Selfish job. But anyway, um, I'm feeling good. Today was, I feel like today was a good day. We had, you know, a newcomer. You guys will eventually meet him. He has been on the show. So he is now officially a healthy hammer. He's yeah. He's under our program. But you guys will meet him in the future. And yeah, it's been a really good productive day. We've been chit-chatting and coming up with ideas. And healthy is about to shake the game up. And I'm excited. Um, But nevertheless, let's get into it. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. What do we do here out here? So, out here, we have our sexual health clinics. We have four different locations. We have our Baldwin Hills location, our Charles Drew University location, located in Watts Willowbrook, um, Compton area. Okay, we have our Long Beach location, which is located near or on the Long Beach campus, Cal State Long Beach campus. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't visited just yet. Mm -hmm. And we have our Olympic uh, location, where they do HIV testing and linkage care, and also, well, I don't think we do linkage, but... Um, linkage to PrEP, uh, and PEP, and then, you know, also treatment of STDs. Uh, what networks does, however, okay, is we incentivize the people $25 to get a rapid HIV test. If you bring a friend, we'll give you an additional $20 on top of that. And if you keep bringing a friend, you know, and we, we see that you've been consistent and, you know, you have a, a passion for it outside of just getting the, the coin. You know, you can even have the opportunity to become a peer health educator, which, um, you know, basically is a recruiter of some sorts, you know, basically brings the people in to get tested. And that is $50 a month. Um, and so if you want to get tested, if you are 18 and up of, you know, any type of ethnic background, as mm-hmm. far as like Black, Latin, eggs, BIPOC, mm-hmm. you know, all of that good stuff. What's BIPOC? What is BIPOC, co-host? Go ahead. Black, Indigenous, people of color. Mm. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is there an and in there? Or it is. It's black and indigenous people of color. But you know, you can be black and indigenous, so you gotta throw that curveball on them real quick because people be forgetting that you can be both. But yeah, so I just say that because mm-hmm. you could be and, but you could be just black indigenous. You could. You could. You could. This is a very you good could. point. The girls would be like, "I'm Native American." My mom like, "I Native American here." All of that. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. But back on topic of networks. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Ahead, so 
Have you already seen up in BIPOC? Okay, come see me. You can ask her Dwayne at the Baldwin Hills location. I'm also at the CDU Charles Drew location. Mm -hmm. You know, every now and again. You got where? I am. You, you out know, here? I, I'm out here. I'm out there. Okay, hello. Okay, I'm everywhere. <laughs> Ooh, bars when I wrap it up. So, not uh, at all. But oh, let's we, get into. We also finished? do prep outreach as well. Too. Okay. So if you want, you want your college, or you know you want your friends, or anything like that to know more about prep, um, you can see my coworker AG or my other coworker Esme, and they will set something up to have a little nice little presentation. We bring snacks and stuff. Okay, no, so I said snacks. Let's not get carried away. But yes, you talking real low today. You good? Um, you know, I it's think really I'm, calm. I'm relaxed. Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, what's going on? But anyway, y'all, Healthy Him, um, as you know, it's the show, but we also have a program, Healthy Him. We focus on Black MSM, men who have sex with men. So you can be bisexual, gay, queer, under the umbrella, it's a spectrum. 18 to 39, we do HIV testing, STI testing, and we offer monkeypox vaccinations currently because you know she's still out there getting people, okay? So if you do that whole checklist that we have, that's a $100 incentive, easily, boom. We also have our Swab and Chill, which you will see a commercial for later on, but it's essentially our at-home HIV test kit. It's literally just a swab of your mouth, a quick whoop, whoop, put it in there, and we send you $25 once you send us the result, and you can do it in the comfort of your own home because most people do not like clinics, okay? We understand. So that is that. We also offer linkage to care for those who are, you know, positive and haven't been in care in a long time, or they just found out they're positive and need to be linked into care. We do that here, and we send you next to our clinic next door, and we do the whole process with you. And the person that just started is officially, like, you know, the person who will be assisting you with that. So once you meet him and get used to him, you'll be like, okay, he's cool. I like him. And they're all black. Of course, because, you know, we got to be the demographic. Hello? So, um... I seen some things. Yeah, I didn't heard some things too, but you know, life is life. But yeah, as you know, we offer prep and pep, and prep is essentially, you know, the um, plan B uh, for the community and everyone. But I feel like we gotta start getting prep out there for the straight girls too, you know, the straight boys and girls, because people really just good, think right? it's only for the homosexuals, and it's not true. But also, pep for those who don't know, post exposure, um, post exposure prophylaxis um, is essentially the morning after pill, as we say. So, That's plan B. Huh? Plan B is the morning after pill, is the equivalent is of it? PEP. Yes. Birth control. Birth control. There we go. It's I messed it up. You're right. PrEP is plan. No. PrEP is birth control. Mm -hmm. PEP is plan B. There, there we go. go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mixed up. But yes. So post exposure prophylaxis, essentially, you have three days to get on it. It is a 28, you know, regimen of pills that you have to take with the 28 days, okay? And you'll take a pill a day. And that is if you have been exposed to HIV in the last three days. Now, after three days, you will have to have a conversation with the medical provider as well, I'm saying. But, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. It's you make that sound so dramatic. <laughs> I'm just a naturally dramatic you person. Really, you really do have to go see a doctor. Now. But other than that, like, you know, you get your meds. You do your thing. You get some new benefits, okay? Look, the I'm benefits screaming. is popping. Don't promote it because of the benefits. But anyway, let's get into our group. I'm just saying, it's not the end so, of the world. There are some pros and some cons, but the pros are tonight? nice. Oh, tonight I have my hip hop class, okay? And I'm gonna actually stop calling it a hip hop class. I'm gonna start calling it a dance class because I do all types yeah, of styles exactly. in that class. There you go. I'm gonna rework that flyer and we all bring. that good stuff. We yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, but tonight we are doing a nice little sexy little chair dance or whatever, okay? Oh, we are just in time for Valentine's Day, y'all. Okay? Dancing on the chairs? Mm -hmm. Ooh, popping splits? No, no. Oh, no. no. This is an open level class, friend. What do you oh. pop? Popping splits? <laughs> Uh -uh. Like, That's you, what everybody be saying. You trying to kill the girls? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you never know. You could just do a little. I mean, I maybe a for ninety degree. Whoever would like to do that, a jazz, split. a jazz split, exactly. Child. It's cute. It's still a split. Give the people credit. Who's trying to be cute in the chair dance? They trying to be sexy. They trying to feel they oaks. They not trying to think about Child. you know what Some they can do. People just want to feel good. And you could feel good in a little jazz bit, but nevertheless, okay, go ahead. You got dance class tonight, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then we also have okay, hey, lucky palette, okay. <laughs> um, but we also have men's mountaintop, which is every second and fourth Wednesday Correct. of the month at our Charles Drew University location. Okay, um, that is specific to 18 and over black and Latinx men who have sex with men, okay? Mm -hmm. We discuss a range of things uh, from like 
mental health to uh, uh, ooh, what is indigenous like cultures as far as like you know older generations, you know, how they're accepting of their kids being queer. If, uh, you know, the Latinx community and the black community have commonalities in coming out, mm -hmm. do they even feel like they need to come out? Some people actually learned in the uh, men's mountaintop that a lot of Latinx people are like not for the gay stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we have those things as well. Um, am I missing anything? I don't feel like I'm missing no, anything. Mm -hmm. For now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So as far as healthy him, we have thrived. So that is essentially for our HIV positive individuals. Again, Black MSM. We have a safe support group for those individuals. And that is first and third Wednesday of every month. So, you know, Men's Mountain Top and Thrive go hand in hand. They go boop, 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 boop. So every Wednesday, it's going to be something. It's just how they go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, it's from 6 to 8, and it's here at our Baldwin Hills location. And that is overseen by um, Dion and our newcomer that you guys will meet soon. They will be overseeing that. And wow, yeah. I think they're going to start as, doing numbers now. Mm-hmm. And as far as Thursdays, y'all know BQT, Black Queer Talks. We talk about everything between love, sex, relationships, and all those things in between. Every first Thursday, we have a Black queer male queer therapist come in and we talk about, you know, growth and our goals and just traumas, child. We be crying. We be doing a lot. They cry a lot. Thinking about it. And yeah. But ultimately, it's always productive and it's always beneficial. And now we've been having different... Um, they're healing tears. Individuals guide and lead. And that this upcoming week, actually, no, this Thursday, in two days, mm -hmm. we have our Healthy Him president. Yes, who, who you be, saw comment earlier, no fun. Yes, he will be speaking about dental hygiene. So, yeah, you know, if you are a Black uh, queer man, uh, 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 come on out, uh, uh, okay? Uh, okay? Or just if you are queer in general, just come out and support, okay? We'll, we'll open the space for learning, because I feel like everybody needs to worry about their dental hygiene, to be honest. But, yeah. And right now, we're not doing Fourth Fridays, but it will be back next oh, month. Oh, we're not. We're not. Oh. I'm not there today. But we will be back next month. So Fourth Fridays is coming, and we have a lot of other great things coming. Black History them. Month is jam packed for y'all out really here at Baldwin Hills Sexual Health Community Resources, really all that good stuff. Okay. February 7th, we are having a Black Queer Market. It's going to be all Black Queer vendors. So if you know mm -hmm. some or you want to shop some, dance a little bit, get some champagne. Come over, you know. Okay, and then that following Saturday on the 11th, we are having our second annual second uh, Sexual Health Saturdays here at our Baldwin Hills location. We will have food. We will have other organizations telling you about. And we are offering STD testing, HIV yes, testing, always. monkeypox vaccinations. You name it. That's okay, always. we got it. Here at Baldwin Hills, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's always. That's and look, if you if you you know work in two jobs throughout the week and you don't really have time to really uh you know get tested or anything like that. Now is the opportunity, and we're going to feed you, okay? So, like, come on over. Yes. Without further ado, we be talking a lot. So, y'all, let's get into the subject for today, okay? Come on, bring in the main topic and our guest. So, we talking about eggplants and peaches, y'all, okay? So, I feel like eggplants obviously symbolizes, you know, the penile. And peaches is usually, like, you know, the more um, opposite of the penile, essentially. Yes. So, we're going to... We're going to get into this conversation. We're going to talk about Black queer men and Black queer women. And we're going to bring our Gabby's in. Can you bring them in, darling? Yes, Come Gabby on. Avery and Gabby Lang. Oh, Gabby. 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 Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Can you guys hear us? Yes. I'm so sorry that you can't see our faces today. I'm struggling a little bit, but hopefully. No, you good. We know it's that time of the year, okay? Because I'm losing my voice as well, so I totally get it, okay? Oh, thank you. Okay. I cannot. But I, I, you know, healing energy through the camera. Period. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first off, thank you for being on the show. Yes, of course. Yes. And I just want to... I just love the fact that y'all both have the same name. Like, I'm like, how? Like, I just <laughs> love that. Like, how can you meet your partner and be like, oh, we have the same name? I love it. Like, that's so <laughs> It's so funny because when we met, we are in the same sorority. And what sorority? We're in Zetas. Oh, I knew <laughs> And so yeah, we're, yeah. Both, we're both aces of our line. So, like, we met and it was like, oh, you're a Zeta. You're an ace. You're a Gabby. 
it just worked out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an ace club. Well, I'm an iota. I'm also hey. an ace. Hey. 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 We love it. Come on, Dinan family. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes me love y'all even more now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I just want to start by, well, we know your names. Can we get your pronouns? Yes, we are people? both. We're both she, her. Yes. Okay. Yes. Both she, her. Boom. Yes. I am he, him, his. For you, making sure. I am he, she, they, and Beyonce. Period. Oh, yeah. oh the Beyonce. <laughs> Take that one. I'm she, her, and Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm with it. Hey, I, I, I know how to share. <laughs> but yeah, so the conversation today, we really want to talk about, I feel like there's so much division between Black queer men, and you guys identify as queer, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, making sure. So there's so much division between like black queer men and I feel like black queer women. And like full disclosure, I always talk about it. I was raised by a black queer woman, like my mother's gay. Wow. So that yes, cool. <laughs> we're 14 years apart and my whole family is like 95% gay. Wow. So it's always like, I know it's crazy, <laughs> but it's always like a subject. I'm like, why is there such a division when we're so like, the same to me at least mm -hmm. I feel like we're so the same why do you guys feel like there's a division or do you think it's a division or why not that's so interesting so from my point of view I have never felt that division on a personal level even before I considered myself queer I've always loved black queer men I just feel like to me the connection that we have with them is so superior. Um, so I don't. I don't personally have experience with that, but I haven't been out as queer as long as my wife has. So mm -hmm. yeah, I um, uh, I I agree with you um, with that statement, and I've been trying to figure it out for a while as well. And I know from my experience uh, with me being masculine presenting, um, there's like you know, from like I said, from my experience, it seems like um, gay men, especially like a flamboyant gay or queer men, seems to be highly accepted by women, right? Especially uh, yeah. heterosexual women. Mm -hmm. um, but there nor normally isn't a place for us masculine presenting women to fit into. And, um, you know, because we're not like, normally we're not accepted, you know, open arms by, you know, straight women or straight men. You know what I'm saying? It's like, where do we fit in at, right? And then there's a lot of competition between us, like between, you know, different masculine presenting women. And so it's kind of hard to, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, find your place, like, you know, where you belong, you know? Um, and... I, I think that it maybe because we, from my experience, maybe because we don't like the same things, right? Like mm -hmm. um, maybe I might be just too fucking hood or like too too aggressive, right? Too much on the masculine side as far as as far as the way that I think and I go about things in life um, compared to um, one of my friends who may be queer and uh, more more feminine presenting or just being more on the side of uh, having things in common with like straight women as far as, you know, like men and um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get super stereotypical here. So don't, this, this these are not my thoughts. This, this is just yeah. as, as far as society, I'm gonna get super stereotypical. I, I'm not putting this on any of you guys um, just going straight from like what we see from the outside looking in, mm -hmm. right? And when I, I don't even know why I'm saying we because I am not a part of them, but you know, like as far as, uh, you know, like, like in, let's, let's say dance, shopping, uh, possibly dibbling, dabbling into makeup or mm -hmm. heels or things like that. Wow. You see my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> are fabulous all the time <laughs> and so normally I'm not into those things and so you know I'm more into like sports or mm -hmm. you know like um, different uh, action figures and masculine and, things yeah, yeah. and I, I hate to like kind of put everything under one umbrella but yeah. it, it seems like there's 
there's just not a, a, a line where we, where we really relate to each other. Mm. And it's, like, it's almost like we kind of just fall into whatever society has already set up for cisgender men and cisgender women. You know, we just like fall into that. Right. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I've never really felt the division like consistently. Like I've had run ins with like masculine presenting like uh, black queer women. Yeah. But I feel like typically that's I mean, it doesn't happen often. But when it does, I feel like it's it's more of like a way to make themselves feel like more masculine and like yeah. better about themselves. Because mm -hmm. um, usually at, um you know, depending on the day, I'm either masculine presenting or feminine presenting. It all depends. Mm -hmm. um, yep. <laughs> so, so like, um, if I'm on that day happening to be, like, you know, a little bit more feminine, a little bit more cunt, you know, um, that's typically when I have, like, an issue with, like, a more masculine presenting queer woman. I never really understood that. It's just, like, yeah. we're the same. Like, yes. Yes. like what's, what's going on? Like, why do you feel the need to comment on me? Like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And just so, uh, are you about to say something? I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. Okay, just so we know the differentiations. Can we get like a, this is Gabby one, this is Gabby, like, who's who? Yeah, y'all can refer to me as Gabby J. J? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so and I'm and I can just be Gabby. I'm just Gabby over here. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, so um, Gabby J. Yes. When it comes to because you were saying you feel like like more masculine presenting and um, yes, you in that realm. How do you feel about? Because I know this is a big thing in that part of the community. How do you feel about the word like dyke or like those type of I guess archetypes that people put on? Yeah. Individuals, yeah. Personally, for me, it's it depends. You know, um, kind of, I kind of look at it like the word "nigga" or mm -hmm. uh, "bitch," right? Especially with me being a woman, like you know, right. people, a lot of women, you find a little, a lot of different opinions on how women feel about the word "bitch" or whatever. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like it depends on who's saying it, who is it coming from. Because if you called me a dyke, but it was like in a joking, in a joking way, in a you know not offensive way, I I know how you're saying it. You know, I know that you're not coming from a, a place of malice. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. but if somebody is trying to describe me in a derogatory way, or they're using it, they're trying to use it in a derogatory way, then that's it makes me more uncomfortable that way. Or or when like straight men. Cause I've had this experience as well when straight men are trying to describe me to another like straight man or straight woman. And mm -hmm. it's like, they don't mean it in a bad way, but they don't know another word to use right. to describe what type of gay person that I am because I'm not a, like my wife is feminine. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, yeah, she's, you know, she's queer, but you can't tell unless you say something Unless, unless you guys have a conversation or unless she she comes out and say it, right? And so when they're trying to describe me to other people, it's like, oh, well, well, she's a she's gay, but she's a dyke. Like, so she's masculine, basically, in other words. Mm -hmm. And so there, you know, there were times where I had to, you know, correct uh, my straight male friends with that because, you know, it's like, for them, it's like, I don't mean anything by it. I'm just trying to, like, I don't know another word to use to describe you. And so I would educate them on that and stuff. But though, in, in that sense, it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, as a masculine uh, presenting uh, woman, what uh, term do you prefer? Like, I know you can't speak for the whole, like, masculine mm -hmm. Black queer woman community, but, like, for you personally, Gabby J, like, what is preferable? Like... Um, I prefer, like, stud, honestly. Yeah, um, it's cuter, I think. Yeah. <laughs> stud is a compliment, and mm -hmm. like you, oh, you a stud, like oh. I, I'm from New York. <laughs> we say ag, like that's what I grew up hearing before I moved, like or I met Gabby, and she said stud. I had never heard stud before. I had heard ags, which is supposed to be like aggressive or aggressor. Like I guess yeah. that was what that was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And she told me she didn't like that term, and I was confused because all the masculine 
you know, women that I had met before, that's what they refer to themselves as. So I think it's very regional yeah. and like personal. I don't know anybody yeah. who likes being called a dyke, but I mean, yeah. maybe there's someone out there <laughs> who likes being called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say, um, you about to say something? No, go for it. Okay, I'm trying to make make sure it's silent before I speak. But um, I think we can all agree that there is not really many spaces for Black queer individuals at all in LA. In yeah. my opinion. Yes. I do, however, feel like Black queer men do get more spaces than Black queer women. I agree with How that. How do you guys feel about that? I agree with that. That was, um, that's something that's super frustrating mm-hmm. to me about LA because um, I feel like there are already so few places for me to go and feel safe, you yeah. know? And it, it, you know, especially we ho, like, you know, they cater mainly to white male gays, like, yeah. you yeah. know. Um, and then it's like the one night a week in the one club. <laughs> <laughs> It's, wow. Then it's like black queer men, like you know, oh, anyway. and it it just it it's like the club scene is like a microcosm of mm-hmm. of how we are treated in in general in society. Yeah, it's I just do. like you know, already being black, then being a woman, then being masculine presenting. I'm like just completely an afterthought. It's mm-hmm. I was just saying this to my wife. Like I barely see myself on TV. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. And when I do, it's always somebody else's version of what a stud or AG or a masculine presenting woman, whatever, however you want to refer to yourself, there's always like somebody else's version of what that person looks like. So if she is masculine, she still needs to have eyelashes on and still have makeup, full face mm-hmm. makeup. You know, she can dress a little masculine, but she still needs to kind of, you know, have the feminine qualities that yeah. mm-hmm. are like early the brat aesthetic. Yes. Right. Early the brat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's always been interesting to me, but I mean, Hey, you know, there are, there are, you know, diasporas of, you know, queer does not look the same on everybody, but I totally get what you're saying as far as like the representation. Um, but do you feel like this division is like with everybody in the community or do you feel like it's just specific to, you know, um, those who go against the, the um, you know, general community like guidelines, for example, like feminine men and like, you know, masculine presenting women. Like, do you feel like this division is strictly within like that realm or do you feel like it's as a whole in the black queer community, uh, the black queer male community versus the black queer um, female community. Yeah. Um, I, wow, that's, that's a loaded question. Um, I haven't necessarily experienced, um, a lot of division when it comes to the black queer community as a whole. Um, it's, it seems like we can all get together and hang out together but there's just difference, you know, there are just things that are just different, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, you just have different interests and things like that, right? So maybe we can have a really, really good conversation. I could talk to Ryan about being Greek and his college experience. And, you know, Dwayne, I could talk to you about a number of things. I mean, you know, we've hung out for plenty of times. Yeah. Um, and those that it's always so genuine. So I, I haven't really had a lot of experience of the division between like, the black queers, like you know, but it's to me, it's more so racial. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's the racial division that's worse than anything mm. else. At least yeah. from mm. what I have witnessed, because yeah. I feel like I just have a cloak over me, like no one is looking at me, assuming. So I get to see a lot of more so on the straight side the horrible things that people will say, mm. not knowing that I am married to a woman, more so than seeing the division within mm. the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's that like for you in that moment? Like, do you speak up? Do you not speak up? Like, how do you go about like navigating that situ- uh, those situations? You know, it's really hard. Like when when it first started happening, it was a shock to me 
And a lot of the time it would be people that I didn't know. So like I would be like on the bus or something and then they would see a gay person come on the bus and they would say something to me. So at first I, I really wouldn't say anything. And it wasn't until I had a client, um, they had like a media company and I do social media management and it was pride month. So I was like, okay, well it's pride month. We obviously have to post something about this. And they didn't want to, because they were like, oh, you know, our community, like they don't really resonate with that. And I'm afraid that if we post something about that, you know, people will unfollow us or they'll get upset. And at first, you know, I had spoken to my wife about it and she kind of had spoken to me about the best way to deal with it and say like, you know, what to say, but she was like, I don't think that you should fire this client. But ultimately, I did end up firing her because it just felt it felt wrong for me to be essentially in a place of privilege in this space. Like, ultimately, I have a lot of privilege as a very feminine woman who is in this space. And no one can tell, you know, that I am a lesbian or I'm bisexual or whatever from my relationship. So I feel like it is a responsibility of me now to speak up. It took a while for me to get here, but now I feel like I'm quick to curse somebody out. Like as soon as I've I been looking at people, like I will say wife and look at them in their eye and just wait for a twitch for anything. Like I'm like, I dare you. I dare you. Okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> I feel that. I love that energy. Yeah. And Gabby, I love that you said like you are aware of your privilege. Cause I was gonna get to that next. Like I feel like what? Well, last statement, then we got to cut to commercial. Oh, yeah, you do that commercial. You're right. Mm -hmm. Actually, we'll hold this for commercial. We'll be right back at this commercial, Are you in need of a quick and easy way to know your HIV status? Swab and Chill is a discreet way to learn your status in the comfort of your own home. The process gives you results in 20 minutes. Swab the upper gums, swab the lower gums, and voila! Simply follow the colorful step-by-step -step instructions located inside the kit. Or call APLA and we can assist you virtually. In addition, all kits include condoms and lube for that penetrative front. For our trans clients, we have Swab and Chill Plus, a customizable kit for trans-specific needs. And we haven't forgotten about COVID either. All kits include personal protection gear, like face masks, comfortable yet stylish, a personal touch tool for dealing with those germ-infested handles and ATM keypads, wet wipes for those little messes that need cleaning up. Also, keep that summer body protected with Swab and Chill sunscreen, and don't forget about our fanny packs for those quick trips to the store. All this can be yours. Simply call Swab and Chill at 323-329-9713 or email us at swabandchill at apla.org. We would love for you to be part of our Swab and Chill family. Come Swab and Chill with us! <laughs> we are back, y'all. We are talking about eggplants and peaches. We are talking about the division of Black queer men and Black queer women. What is the divide? What is the issue? How do we come together? All the things. As now, well as like the intersectionalities. Correct. And we'll get into that. Okay. Now, before I left, I was asking Gabby a question. So she said that she Which was Gabby? aware. Oh, just Gabby. Gabby. Just mm -hmm. Gabby. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> She said that she was aware of her privilege. Now, one thing that we did talk about on one of our episodes recently, mm -hmm. um, co-hosts, mm -hmm. we talked about that there is privilege in the Black 
queer male spectrum as well. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of masculine presenting men can get away with things and be okay. And then it's funny how it's different on the queer woman spectrum because then it's like, oh, those who present you know feminine and everything is like they can be seen and be like, okay, you're cool. Mm -hmm. Now, Gabby, have you ever used your privilege to your advantage? Ooh. Have I? Ooh. Why are you smiling? Like my wife is looking at me like I have. <laughs> From my personal, Ooh. I know men do it, so I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly. Cognizantly, I don't think so, but my wife's reaction yeah. leads me to believe that I have. So does so she, Gabby J? Does she, Gabby J? I want to know. I mean, I, I think to be fair to her, uh, she didn't know that she was sitting in privilege, right? And you okay. know how sometimes when you're just black, you don't, you, you just feel like you have no privileges, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, and you know, there was a moment where we had to have a conversation because uh, she couldn't. She couldn't understand where I was coming from when I would walk into certain spaces, a restaurant, a bar, a club, um, an event. And I turn to her and I say, I feel uncomfortable. And she's like, why? And I'm like, everybody is staring at me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Normally I'm used to that because it's like, I, I chose this life. I chose to live out loud. And so I understood what came with that. Uh, but, you know, she, with her be, being able to, you know, be queer, but not be judged on from, you know, from, on first sight, um, she didn't, she just didn't know, you know, she just didn't know. And uh, yeah, I, I had to just say to her, like, yeah, um, this is why I feel uncomfortable in this, you know, in this space. And I'm just not up to, to deal with it today. Like, you know what I'm saying? Normally every day I can deal with it, but today I just wanted to have a good time and you know, we kind of got into a back and forth of like, well, I feel, you know, she's saying to me, uh, I feel like nobody is staring at you. I feel like you're overthinking it, which I probably was, but um, I'm a Pisces, so I'm an energy person. And, <laughs> and you know, like if I don't feel good, then it's going to show all over my face, all in my energy. And, you know, um, it took that happening a couple of times and us getting into a back and forth for her to understand that, you know, nobody really has to say anything. I can, you know, feel the energy. And mm -hmm. uh, I think she's more cognizant of it now. So I'm not going to say she was using it intentionally, but it was just like, you know, you're able to go into any space and more than likely have, you know, guys attracted to you before they're judging you. Like, you know. Yeah, and when I, when I do think on it for a long time, I even feel like subconsciously now, I tend to wait to let people know that I am married to a woman until I feel it's necessary for them to know. Yeah. So like versus I understand that I can wait for that bias to be put on me. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes I do it as a, as a room temperature check of like, I want to know where everyone truly stands. Cause once I say this, I know that it's going to change everything. And sometimes I just don't feel like dealing with the risks, you yeah. know, in all transparency. So I just won't mention it. But so 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 in a sense, yes, I do think that I use my privilege when I feel necessary. But I guess I never thought of it that way until just now. <laughs> that's fair. But, you know, I think that's so interesting because like, I don't know, maybe because society is changing now. But yeah. I feel like I can walk into any space and I mean, be looked at. Yes. But like. I feel like to, in today's society, people have no choice but to accept me. And I'm saying like, not just how I am now, but even as a like feminine presenting, like if I have like crop ties and like some short shorts on or something, you know, some boots, um, yeah. you know, yeah. I feel like I still, um, I feel like I've still been able to navigate those spaces with, you know, a certain level of respect and things like that. But I feel like that, on the other hand, of that comes from my male privilege, not necessarily my you know, masculine presenting privilege or like my queer privilege. I feel like that's yeah. me being a man. And don't don't bring that to Ohio because they will bring you a reality check quick. Because the first time I went to Ohio with Gabby, I was sort of, I remember we were in Walmart and I was like holding her hand, just doing stuff that we always do. And like people were just staring at us so like, repulsed and disgusted and I just 
you know, at least in LA, like if they if they feel some way, they'll just side eye. They won't just like look you in your face, like how dare you? Yeah, have the nerve to like yeah. be here doing these hate, like this disgusting stuff in yeah. front of us. So yeah, I think it's also because she's from Ohio. Yeah. It just makes a higher level of awareness of like what's happening and that that feeling. Yeah, and Ohio is stuck in the early 1900s. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, so I heard Gabby J is from Ohio. So we're going to sidetrack real quick. Gabby, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. Okay, period. Yeah. Uh, East Coast Brooklyn. I'm from Baltimore. So, uh, oh, okay. East Coast. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> and Gabby, what's your sign? I'm a Leo. Okay, come on, fire and water. We like right. that. It, fire and water, indeed. Okay, for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, back to the subject, my bad. Um, do you guys ever feel like concerned with your safety, like in ex like situations like that or experiences? Yes. Like, have you had an experience where it was like, I'm genuinely concerned about my safety because like, yeah, the Glock on standby, like, what's going on? <laughs> like Absolutely, I'm always concerned. Well, I won't say always. I'm always aware of okay. like what can happen, um, but frequently. I I am concerned about my safety when I'm with her, when I'm not with her. When I was in college, um, I used to be at, you know, regular college parties or whatever, and I would get threatened by men for literally doing nothing, sitting there dancing, and a guy would walk past me and be like, you want to look like a nigga? I'll knock you out like a nigga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, um, right. You know, and then like, I want to say maybe six to eight months after we moved to California, this is back in like 2014, 2014, 2015-ish, mm -hmm. we were in Hollywood and, you know, we were just, you know, just walking around, we broke, we ain't had nothing else to do, so we just out there, you know, trying to be in a mix, and the, we kept walking past these guys, so I think it was a group of maybe three or four guys. I think they had to be tourists. They were definitely tourists, for sure, mm -hmm. and... Um, the first time we walked past them, they hit on Gabby. Me and Gabby were holding hands. They hit on Gabby, whatever. You know, we ignored them. Then we ended up walking past them again. And, you know, he made a comment to me, like, you know, I, I can give it to both of y'all, basically. I'll give it to both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't just want her. I can have both of y'all. So I'm just looking like, all right. Like, I'm just, I'm not even going to engage in this. And then the third time we seen him, I don't know how we walked past this nigga so many times. <laughs> <laughs> We seen him again and he had got even more derogatory with his approach, right? He said something about um something about quote unquote dicking us both down. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm like, bro, I'm good, like I'm cool. And he's like, Oh, I could just take your girl, something like that. He said, and I just looked back at him like, try, you could try. And so I cause his boys started laughing, they started dying. And you could see, you know how when a man is like embarrassed, how that mm -hmm. uh, embarrassment, uh, and I, like I said, I have uh, experience with this, that embarrassment don't, most of the time don't just sit, especially when you get embarrassed in front of somebody else. Mm -hmm. You could see he was like contemplating if he was gonna run up on me or not. Like I could see it, but it was like, you know, this is literally a risk that I have to take every single day. You know what I'm saying? And we've, I've been in a club with my sorority sisters and my wife and, you know, guys will be great. You know how men are, they'll be grabbing on, which I, I hate going to straight clubs. Like I really, really do, um, you know, <laughs> and, you know, they, you know, they're grabbing on the girls. And I just be like, yo, watch out, watch out. They good. You know, they good. They good. And I remember and this was in LA. We were at Henny Palooza and <laughs> I remember the guy he he grabbed on Gabby and I, I grabbed her arm to like snatch away from him and I'm like she good and he literally like jumped at me like he was about to punch me in the face and he was like oh shit that's a girl so he turned and looked at his boys like that's a girl that's a girl like so we started laughing he like oh shit I was about to knock your ass out like okay cool cool and so, like, I'm always in situations like that. And to be honest, I'll be leaning on my, you know, female privilege when it comes to, to situations like that. Because I do know that most of the most of the time, if a guy see, if he can recognize that I'm a woman, then he's going to relax a little bit mm -hmm. um, compared to if I was a guy, you know. And it's, it's, it's just a reminder that I just, I always have to be cognizant about that everywhere we go, everywhere. 
Right. And do you feel like, because for me, I have similar experiences, but it's on the feminine side. Because I oh, feel like that's really? where my privilege is like not accepted at all. It's oh, just wow, like, really? you gay as fuck. Like, wow. Like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like in comparison to Dwayne, what you mean? You can be feminine, as we know, but he gives like Trey, low key. You could give Trey. You got. Yeah, you still give Trey. I, give, I, give, I give. I'm still feminine, but I'll still probably meet you outside. I'm screaming. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I give very much so Benji film. Okay, like I fight, but I'm also feminine, and I have yeah. a little masculine energy, but like uh-huh. mostly feminine energy. Yeah. So when it comes to spaces like that. Do y'all ever feel, well, I guess more Gabby J, do you ever feel like it's the fact that people are intimidated or what do you think? Yeah, um, I, I do think that I make guys very uncomfortable and um, I think I make them insecure, to be honest. That's the word. That's yeah, the word. <laughs> I, I think I make That's them- I word. Yeah. <laughs> um, because you know, it's I frequently get um, how did you how did you get her? How did you get her? Like she doesn't even look like she's into women at all. Um, and I think for you know the guys who are just cool and, and, and open enough to to ask me that, just you know, trying to figure themselves out, I guess, we can have that conversation. But then there are certain guys who for instance, we were just in New York in August and it was this older man, uh, me, it's me, my wife, my brother, and my mom. And we all, we in Manhattan or we in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn. And mm-hmm. we just, you know, walk, we walk into the train and this old man, he like just come out of nowhere talking to Gabby and shit. And she tells him that she's married and, you know, she's with her wife and he completely, I mean, she might as well say, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because he continued on with trying to hit on her, right? Mm. And that is always a tricky situation for me because it's like, you know, I, I always have to make the decision. Okay, am I going to step in here and cut this out and risk, you know, like real talk. I, th- this is this situation could easily become life-threatening, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, I have to make a decision quickly. Like, okay, am I going to step in or am I going to let her handle this, you know, in the moment? But he was just so aggressive. He walked with us like maybe two and a half blocks. Oh no! Just trying to talk to my wife and my mom had because I'm sitting here like you know what he this big ass nigga like I, you know hopefully he just get the point and go away you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I'm not in New York like I, I I ain't ducking no smoke but I ain't trying to start no smoke either like you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. and so my mom had to like get aggressive with him to get him to walk away because even my mom was like yo she married him and he's like yeah 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 but you know X Y Z or whatever yeah. And so my mom legit had to tell him, like, nigga, did you hear me? You hear what I just said? Like, she had to buck up on this nigga. And it's like, but that's my every day. That's not like a once every five years, once a year. Like, you know, and and I don't know when I'm making a guy uncomfortable. Because, you know, sometimes they'll just come out of nowhere and swing on you because they having a bad day. And then they see Mm -hmm. you or they see me. They see I'm with her. And now they feel like they have to prove themselves you know and so it's like this is an everyday thing for me and I you know I just I just know what it is you know what I'm saying and like I said I ain't ducking no smoke it just it's it's just me making that decision of like okay (laughs) every time I step off this house and go into a different area walk down the street walk to the to the train whatever my life is constantly at risk depending on how an insecure man is feeling that day that part you know and it's always i feel like it's always the same individual targeting different people like they'll target black queer women they'll target black queer men yes always insecure men and i say it often i don't know if y'all agree but i feel like hetero black men are the white men of the black community Mm. they are and you know Mm. i also just feel like there's something about feminine men and masculine women living in their truth and choosing to be exactly who they are and taking that risk every day that bothers a lot of people because a lot of people are just walking around the world just trying to blend in just trying to like afraid of them own selves like they don't know themselves and seeing somebody just so secure in who they are even though it 
puts them at the risk of being harmed, ostracized. Like they just can't take it. Like they just literally, <laughs> to me, it's a sign of such supreme weakness that mm. you see somebody living in their truth and happy in that. And it bothers you. You don't, what they do in their bed does not impact you. How mm. they dress has nothing to do with you. So why are you so mad? Like, that part. get a life. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a question like pertaining to this as well because I mean I obviously like you know the this this his hetero man is going to you know try to you know finagle his way into like um you know either one or both of y'all's uh you know lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um but does that ever happen within like you know the the black uh female queer black queer female community like for example you know um, you two are a masculine, um, and one is masculine and one is like a feminine presenting couple. Um, do you ever get like, you know, other femmes coming up to Gabby, uh, Gabby J and like trying to, you know, shoot their shot and be like, oh, well, you know, why are you with her when, you know, you could be with me and like, we could be cute together and share clothes and stuff or whatever. Yeah, it's so interesting. I I personally find that women who are attracted to masculine women or maybe just my wife are very aggressive. <laughs> like they be acting like they ready to fight me to the death. I be like, girl, like, damn, like that be so. Because I remember, so when we were in college, we met in college, and then after dating for a couple of months, right? Maybe like too much. We're lesbians, you know, whatever. She came, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Uh, she came to move to my school, <laughs> and as soon as she came to my school, she was working in my dining hall. And girls would come up to the job to be flirting with her and stuff. And people knew that we were dating, and I would walk up, and they would just give me a death stare, and then just keep flirting with her. And I was like, "What the actual fuck?" <laughs> there was one girl; she was like pretending to be my friend and trying to get with Gabby on the side. That's horrible. And I was like, "What is what?" Like, I couldn't even believe. We don't have to talk about that off air because I want to know. Like, right. <laughs> it's a story. What happened? After no, it didn't go well. If you could, I know what I would have done. <laughs> right. I probably did it, Dwayne. I probably did. But I I personally find like, yeah, like these women don't be having no respect for me. <laughs> That's a mess. Well getting into the my favorite portion. Now it's known that a lot of people do this queer fishing, essentially. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do y'all feel about how do y'all feel about it? Like it's known that like a lot of women are out there being like, oh yeah, I'm gay, and they just want to try it, but then they really be like playing people's uh -huh. lives, their emotions, uh -huh. and all of this. And then in the media, like, oh yeah, I'm bisexual, I'm this, I'm that. And then right, like, yeah. <laughs> what did y'all take on that? <laughs> it's such oh. a pet, it's such a pet peeve of mine. It's been a pet peeve since um, you know being queer was low-key popular back in like oh oh nine and 2010 mm -hmm. and, you know it was another phase and you know rappers were talking about it Nicki Minaj was talking about it, you know and it, it I mean it was just frustrating I'm, I'm, I've been uh, you know me and my wife celebrating 10 years this year so I've been out, out of the market for so long so it, it don't bother me now because I just I see it for what it is but Back then, it was super duper frustrating because it's like, you know, you, you're getting into these situations with people. And, um, you know, if, I, if I'm like talking to a girl or whatever, and it seems like we're vibing, then, you know, she turned around and she's like, oh, yeah, no, I was just like, just saying I, I was gay. I was just saying I was into girls for fun because like the guys like it, you know, mm -hmm. that that was that was a rough time. I, I don't know how bad it is now, but at the at the time it was it was super rough. But I'm just not impacted by it today. I still think it's whack as hell. Um, no. But yeah, that's those are my thoughts. I just feel like people like I'm bisexual, and I feel like that makes being bisexual very difficult. There's already a stigma when you're bisexual that you're greedy, yeah. that you <laughs> you can't pick a side, whatever the situation is. And I feel like with that added on to it, I swear if I wasn't married to my wife, I feel like it would get no respect. I feel like people are like, oh, you're bisexual, you married a woman, interesting. But without <laughs> that, before that, it's like if you're bisexual, it just 
it doesn't get any type of warmth because a lot of people who queer fish will use that. Yeah. And it's just frustrating. Like, I feel like being bisexual is like so challenging in that sense because no one takes your sexuality seriously. Yeah. And as far as the media goes, how do y'all feel about the representation? Of, Cause I know Gabby J kind of got into it, like not seeing herself um, yeah. in media, but how do y'all feel about the representation? Like right now, I feel like a notable black female couple is Jessica and Niecy Nash. And yes. I like oh, yes. okay, a big that. essence poster of them in my apartment right yes. now. But like, how do you guys feel about them and other representation of like black female queer love? Yeah. I feel, I feel truly like sometimes I see at least fictional representation and it's very frustrating to me because I will see it and I'm like, that's not how people I know act and dress. And especially when it comes to masculine women and how they're represented, I feel like it's very inaccurate. And it is like, I know so many studs. I see yeah. so many studs when I walk around every major metropolitan city and I'm just confused as to why the like the media tries to act like they don't exist yeah. and they're not desirable and they're yeah. not high in demand like yeah. okay. it's just it's just weird to me um yeah. so yeah i feel like there's still a lot of, like i love like niecy nash and her wife and yeah. young and may yeah and all of that like, and lena waves it's yeah. like it's amazing yeah. to see that it's starting to change but yeah. for me it's just like damn like how are y'all in these writing rooms that have no idea that studs exist? Like, yeah, so it's not making sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like, um, I do feel like uh, feminine presenting gay men have more of a door in, a foot in, in media. I feel like it's, on TV, it just feels a little bit more acceptable because they can play with it and they can make fucking jokes about it. And, yeah. you know, she's always the best friend to the lead character or something stupid right. like that. Stereotyped um, as fuck, but yes. yeah. But right, that's right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, we progress from the stereotypes. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like, can we progress <laughs> from the stereotypes? You know what I would love to see? I would love to see a show about a feminine gay man and a masculine gay woman yeah. woman who is they're both black and they're like roommates yeah trying that's to live and figure out life yeah wouldn't that be amazing and it's we like their love stories and like we they're dating that. yes that's yes you gotta do that that would be cute yeah. girl you better pitch that somebody gonna steal it right <laughs> <laughs> okay. but we are coming up on the end of the show and I would like to say thank you so much, Gabby J and Gabby, for being here with us and discussing and really opening up, um, not only in, uh, and let us into your relationship, but into your experiences. Yes. Um, hopefully we'll see y'all again because we do have an episode coming up on, you know, um, Black queer entrepreneurs and things like that. Please oh, so invite us back anytime. And I promise y'all yeah. will see my face next right, time. Yeah. Okay, I'll be ready for y'all. <laughs> We're going to have more because we didn't get through this episode. We got too much right. to talk about. Right. So we're yes. going to have y'all back for sure. Yes. But thank you for being on the show today. Yes. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sure. <laughs> thank you for being on the show today. And I do want to have y'all back. But um, other than that, we're about to be out. Y'all have any last words that y'all want to get out for the people? Well, y'all social media. Do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> my Instagram is yeah, Strut Social with Gabby. Um, thank you guys for having me again. Love this. Love what you're doing. This is so needed in our community. And yes. I look forward to telling more people about the amazing work that y'all are doing. Absolutely. And my uh, Instagram is Gabby underscore J. That's J-A-I. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm not really that active right now. I've been on my creative-ish and, you know, just kind of focusing on that. So, you know, I if you follow, you follow. If you don't, you don't. But I appreciate y'all. <laughs> yeah, sure. Y'all gonna get a follow for me. So just if you want to okay, follow okay. Me, that'd be nice. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank y'all for being on the show. I will talk to y'all soon. It's your fave duo saying bye. bye. bye.